seven designer bags that have been in my collection for the longest amount of time. Now you might be thinking that these bags are some of my best ever purchases and that's exactly what I thought until I started pulling together this video and realized that I don't actually use many of them. Find out which bags they are and how I have found them in this video. Make sure you stay tuned until the end because I'll be revealing my biggest regret and my best purchase out of these seven. The first bag is from Saint Laurent. Now this isn't my first ever designer bag. That was actually a Mulberry Bayswater, which I sold a year after I had it. This, however, I would describe as my first ever evening designer bag. And here it is. This has a lot of sentimental value for me because I remember just getting this bag and just absolutely falling in love with it. It's such a classic piece and I do recommend to anyone who might be looking for an evening bag that is just going to stand the test of time. So this is my YSL or Saint Laurent Kate wallet on chain bag. So this is in a black velvet with gold hardware. It's a really great size, like it's quite a big bag here. And let me just show you inside quickly. So it has a detachable gold chain strap. So I would often wear this as a shoulder bag in the evening. It has so many card slots, a zipper compartment, like you can get your phone in here, little makeup bits, car keys. So it is a really great size bag. I don't believe you can get this exact bag anymore, but you can still get the Kate bag, which is basically the, the same kind of bag. It's just less of a wallet on chain. You don't have the card slots inside. I will pop links, by the way, guys, in the description box for you so that you can shop this video super easily. Highly recommend. I felt like a million dollars wearing this bag. Since then, because this is my first ever designer evening bag, my collection has accumulated and I now don't really reach for this bag. I honestly cannot tell you the last time that I actually used it. Maybe once in the last, this sounds awful, but maybe like the last two years. Now I really love using my Chanel bags if I've got an evening occasion. And that's not to say that I don't still love this bag. Like I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's still here for that reason. And yet for no other reason than I just gravitate to other bags instead. This one hasn't had so much use recently. How much did I pay for this one? I got this one pre-loved and I think I paid just under 600 pounds. So it was still quite an investment at that time. And if you are looking for a Saint Laurent Kate bag now, it's actually one of their cheaper bags from their collection. It definitely costs you more than £700. I believe they're, you know, over £1,000 now in the UK, probably over about $1,500 in the US. But again, a classic, a staple. If you aren't going to have such an excessive collection like I do, I definitely know that I still would be using this one. Now, before we dive into the second bag, I just want to say, hey everyone, Steph here if you are new to this channel. And I thought I would make this a tag video. I don't think I've seen anyone do a tag video like this one. And I would absolutely love to have a nosy at other YouTubers collections and know what some of their oldest bags are and what they think to them now. Like, were they good buys? Do they regret anything? And so some of the amazing YouTubers I would like to tag. Amelia Rose's Closet, Deb from Wild Unfiltered, Caleb Snell, AZ's Closet, Je Suis Lou, Dale's Addiction, Living Looks with Meredith, The Closet by Connor, We Are Going All Out, Vivian Connolly, Kat L, It's Celesta, Fashionably Amy, Sophie Sahet, and Tiana Perry. I would love to know some of the oldest bags in your collections and what you think. The second bag that is the oldest in my collection. You might notice a theme on the brand as we go forward now because I started to become obsessed with Louis Vuitton. This is my giant monogram speedy bag. And I also have my gorgeous little catagram charm on here. Looks a little bit like my dog, so I had to get this one. This has been in my collection for quite a few years now. I remember getting it, trying to track one down because oh my gosh, did these sell out quickly and then they just became so hard to get. I love that it's in the reverse. So you've got the dark brown going round and then you have the toffee color on the side. This is the bandolier version. So it does come with inside of here a detachable crossbody strap. So this was an absolute must for me. 
and how have I found my Speedy 30 bag? In all honesty, I have taken this bag out the house. This is criminal. This is criminal, don't come for me. But this for me is more of a collector's piece. I just absolutely love it and haven't been able to part with it because I know how hard it will be if I change my mind and want to get one again, that it will just be nearly impossible. So it has left the house around, I want to say two times. I remember using it once to a birthday party and I think maybe once like out nipping to the shops, that is it. This bag really has not seen the light of day as much as it should do, but I've just wanted to keep it in really kind of great pristine condition. However, I do feel like we are going through a moment right now and you know, the whole Y2K era is coming back. And I feel like this speedy bag, I have seen a lot of people talking about theirs more and more recently and I can feel it. My spiny senses are going. I think I'm definitely going to be using this bag a lot more in the near future, let's see. And how much did I pay for this bag? I paid, I believe, 1,350, 1,400 pounds, something like that. I had to use a personal shopper to be able to get my hands on this because it is just completely sold out. So I did pay over retail. However, uh, looking on marketplaces like eBay, for example, these now do sell for quite a high premium, closer to 2,000 pounds, so, this one, I think in terms of an investment, wasn't a bad choice. The third bag, let me grab it because she is down here. This is my Louis Vuitton Neo Noé bucket bag. If you are a subscriber, you might already know I debated this bag for quite a long time. And then after I got this, I don't know why I waited so long. I got the black leather version because I love the monogram canvas with the black leather. I just think they are easier to maintain and I just think they look a little bit more chic as well. How have I found this bag? Honestly, it has completely surprised me. I love it. I have been wearing it quite a lot recently. I've gone through like a period, maybe like a year and a half, two years where I didn't use it all that much. And now I'm just picking it up more and more. The best thing about this is that you can fit a full size bottle of water in and just loads of other stuff. I used to use it a lot when I worked at a workplace as well. Absolutely love it. And in terms of, if you're looking for a new designer bag, maybe a Louis Vuitton, in terms of price increases, I don't feel like this bag has been as badly affected as other styles. Maybe it's because it's not quite as popular, but I don't see why it's not quite as popular because it's just such a fantastic piece. Seriously, I cannot recommend it enough. I just love it. A great grab and go. And if you didn't know, you can adjust these straps. They are just like popper closures and you can extend it and then turn it into a crossbody bag. However, the strap does go quite long, but it's very easy to just buy like a third party strap, maybe like a chain strap or just a shorter leather strap using one from a different bag that you may have, or you can order them on Amazon, or obviously you can get different straps from Louis Vuitton as well. How much did I pay for this one? I wouldn't say this one was the bargain of the century. I paid retail for this one. I believe at the time it was 1,260 pounds. They have gone up since then, but like I said, I don't think they've gone up so much since then, but I've used this bag so much and I just think it's such a fun bag to use. It always gets complimented a lot as well. The fourth oldest bag in my collection is definitely to blame for why I don't use the first one as much anymore. It is my Saint Laurent Sunset bag. This is in the black smooth leather. You can still buy these to this day. Gold hardware, again, classic. So bag number one, the kind of cape wallet on chain. Bag number two, the Sunset. Why do I use the Sunset more. I don't know, I feel like the leather with it being smooth, it maybe just looks a little bit more chic. This bag is bigger though, and this is the medium size, and as you can see, it kind of has a concertina out. We do have a pocket on the back, which I put my phone inside. You can just really simply cross body it or use it as a shoulder bag or on the crook of your arm. And then inside, we have quite a few compartments, but they do come out quite wide, so I don't know what it is. I just feel like this bag's overall look like the Sunset bag. There just feels like there's a little bit more to it than the Kate bag. And this one I feel works better for using in the day, but it does go into the evening really well as well. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Even though this one has sentimental value to me, is it time to let it go? Are these bags just too similar?
Now, because the Sunset is a popular bag, there have been some big price increases over the years on this one. So how much did I pay? I paid, the retail price at the time was £1,260, something like that. So now these retail at around £2,000 in the UK but it is such a gorgeous bag. I would still recommend it even at the current retail. Because this bag has been around a while as well, you might be able to pick up some really great pre-loved bargains. But for me, the amount that I spent on this, I've definitely got my money's worth in terms of use. Like, I just love it. It goes with absolutely everything. And out of all my bag collection, I can confidently say, in terms of like going out in the evening or meeting some friends, this is the bag that I find most versatile, that really will go with any outfit. Like I have a few that definitely still kind of do that, but this is the fail safe. Bag number five on our list is a travel bag. And I longed for this bag for the longest time. This is the Louis Vuitton Keeple. This is the 45 size and I got the Bandalore version again. So we have the hoops on the side. The actual strap is inside of the bag. Again, I went for the black leather because just lower maintenance versus Vachetta leather. And I just overall prefer the look of the black with the canvas. I remember, I feel like this bag went through a phase on social media where I saw a lot of celebrities and influencers traveling and this would be their bag of travel choice. You saw them a lot on top of suitcases, around airports. I mean, you still do. And every time I do see a picture and this bag looks really good, I'm like, ooh, I should definitely keep mine. But if you are a subscriber, you might already know, I have been debating selling this. I haven't got round to selling it because I am still debating it. And one of the reasons that I'm still debating selling this because I haven't used it all that much. I have used it on a couple of weekend trips and I did take it on holiday to Bali with me as well. But I do find the hold all style it does get heavy. I prefer a backpack if I'm carrying something quite heavy, like my laptop, for example, or just a large tote bag. Like sometimes I just don't have the occasions on which I really need a bag like this. But like I said, the reason I haven't got rid of it is because I paid for this bag and you are, you are going to die on this one. Definitely. I paid about £1,260. I have the receipt somewhere. I got this directly from Louis Vuitton. We had a price increase for Louis Vuitton in the UK about two weeks ago now. I will put a link down below in the description box for you if you're interested in seeing the before and after prices. But this bag now retails, I believe, £1,920, so nearly £2,000. And that's a huge increase. And it's really putting me off selling this because I know if I, again, regret the decision, trying to buy one back is going to cost me a lot more. And I just love this version. Like, I definitely got the right keeple version for me. This is the smallest size, but it's still a big bag. I wouldn't want anything bigger and I love the black leather. Like I got the right version. So I'm still on the fence as to whether or not to let this go, even though I don't really use it that much. Sixth bag on our list today is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull bag. And it took me, I've had a lot of the Neverfull bag and I often find I don't use them. I prefer bags that are more secure. And this is a very open style tote bag, but I know so many people swear by this bag because you can literally fit everything inside like laptop, diary, iPads, bottles of water, lunch. You can get everything in these. This is the MM size. This is the only one that has stood the test of time for me that is still in my collection many, many years later. And it is because it is the limited edition Stephen Sprouse version of the bag. So we have these kind of graffiti roses on and they are almost like luminous. I don't know if they come out on camera as bright, but yeah, for me, this has been like the best never full, my personal opinion, ever made in terms of like a limited edition print that has been put onto the bag. And it took me a long time to track one of these down because it was released in 2011. I had to get this one pre-loved because in 2011, I could not afford a Louis Vuitton bag. So here she is. This has been a dream bag for a long time and I don't use it, but again, a bit like my giant monogram Speedy, these are very much collector's pieces to me and ones that I know I will instantly regret if I do ever sell. How much did I pay for this one? I got this for a really great price pre-loved and it took me a long time, like I said, to find one at a reasonable price in like a reasonable condition, like all the Vachetta leather is still looking really nice. It has darkened slightly, but definitely not worn, not cracked, anything like that. And I believe I paid around a thousand pounds, maybe just over a thousand pounds for this one, which again, 
but what these are selling for was a really great price for this condition. So collector's piece, I don't really use it. However, there are some occasions like on a summer's day, if I'm heading out and just want to take some, maybe a little picnic with me or something like that. I want to carry a few bigger items. I'm wearing a white dress. So this kind of adds a pop of color, but it's still a little bit classic as well. This will be the bag that I go for. But honestly, for me, I just absolutely, it still makes me smile, even though I don't use it that much. And finally, the last bag, can you guess? I've just picked it up from down here. If you've been taking note, <laughs> it is my Louis Vuitton on the go. This is in the MM size. I had this in the GM size. So the GM was the first size to ever be released. Then about a year later, they released the MM, which is this one. And now a few months ago, you can now get the reverse canvas in the PM size, which is the smaller size of the bag. Let me just grab actually and show you. This is my PM. Um, I got the PM in the Sunrise Pastel. So the reverse canvas wasn't available at the time that I got this one, but I absolutely love it. So you can see the difference in size, quite a big difference. So this is one of the oldest bags in my collection. It has stood the test of time and it still looks so beautiful. I used to use this a lot again when I went to the workplace and needed more of a tote bag to get my water bottle, lunch inside, my diary, all these things. But I mean, other than that, it's pretty much pristine. I've got a liner in here because I haven't used it all that much. I love that you can kind of turn it round and get the different colors on both sides. And this bag has been subject because it has been a popular tote from the brand. I think I paid about £1,360. That is the price that I think I paid. Now these are much more like closer to £1,900. So less of an increase compared to the Louis Vuitton Keeple, but I got the Keeple before I got this one. And yeah. I do absolutely love it. Like it still looks like such a fabulous bag and it's more structured than the Neverfull. But because I don't have a place of work anymore, I just don't really use this bag so much because I just don't need such a big tote bag. So out of these bags that have stood the test of time in my collections, which ones do I have no regrets about were my best buys. And this was quite an easy one for me. My Saint Laurent Sunset was definitely one of my best buys. Classic, chic, absolutely love using it. And also, my Louis Vuitton Neo Noé, because I couldn't just pick one. I feel like as an evening, like best pick, it was a sunset. And as a day bag, work bag, going to the cinema trips, I love using this one. It would be the Neo Noé, because like I said, you can just get a really great amount of stuff in this bag, but it doesn't feel, even though it's taller, it doesn't feel quite as bulky as the on the go, for example. My least used bag is by far the Louis Vuitton Speedy. Um, I have had numerous Speedies in my collection and never used them because I like a crossbody bag and I find the Speedy, this is a 30, I find them very bulky. So to actually put them like on the side of your body, like they're just so big. I feel like the Speedy is a little bit more of a top handle bag. And for that reason, because this is quite big as well, I just haven't gravitated towards using it that much, but honestly, I don't regret getting this one. I'm really glad that I've still got it in my collection and I can't see it going anywhere anytime soon. So I might just have to get on with it and definitely give this one a bit more love than I have been doing. My biggest regret, can you guess already which one it is? It is the Keeple just because I really haven't used this as much as I thought I would do. And I do find it, obviously it's a big bag. I do find it really heavy. Like I prefer a wheel case, like every day of the week over carrying this either crossbody or with the top handles. If I'm going somewhere, I'm driving somewhere and I can put this in the car, great. This looks fabulous as you walk into the hotel lobby. But from a practicality point of view, if you do actually have to carry it very far, I don't find this bag so fun to use, to be honest with you. So I regret is a strong word. I don't regret getting this. And part of that is because the resale value of this has maintained because we have seen such huge price increases that I know if I did decide to sell this, I could probably recoup a lot of my money back of what I paid for it. So I'm really grateful for that. That's one of the great points about buying designer bags sometimes, especially ones that become discontinued or the prices increase, then they still have a strong market value. But yeah, out of the seven, this is the one that I regret the most. And I think if I didn't have it, it's one of those bags that I feel like I needed to have, I need to kind of have to know that I've done it, been there and it's not worked for me because I'm sure if I didn't have it, I'd maybe be buying one now thinking that it would work out and it wouldn't. So yeah, this is my biggest regret, but not a regret as such. 
As mentioned, I have pop links in the description box down below for you so that you can shop this video super easily. I'm so excited to hopefully see some of the other YouTubers, all this designer bags in their collection, how they've got on with them, how much they paid for them even, and any regrets. Now make sure you don't go anywhere because coming up next, I link my latest video release here for you and over here, five designer bags that I am obsessed with using right now. Enjoy. 